Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. And who will worship me? Who will surrender all? Who will lay in my presence? Who will roll out the red carpet for me? Hello, 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 everybody. Hello. Come on in. Tonight, I am going to be releasing a strong prophetic word that the Lord gave me. And I have been literally here in my prayer room all day long from the very time that I got up until right now. And so I want to just... Have you guys begin to share the broadcast? Everybody's sharing. There's 1,600 people on, and I just got on. Um, it has been less than a minute now of me being live here. So please begin to share the broadcast. Tell me in the comments where you're watching from. I see Delvin watching. I see my amazing husband, Stephen Weaver, watching. I love you. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you. I see my spiritual daughter, Raven. Hello, love you, daughter. All the core group. If you are in the core group, why don't you sound off and come through strong? 
Come on, everybody sharing. We're almost at 2,000 people. And God gave me a word, and this one is going to be probably the heaviest words that I've ever had to release because in the past, many times the Lord gives me a very strong encouragement for the body of Christ. And it has been few times that the Lord has given me a warning or a strong correction. But here we are. And so somebody just type in, I obeyed God. Because that is what I'm going to do tonight. Um, if you are jumping on, you don't know me. I am first and foremost a servant girl to Jesus Christ. I live for him. He is my everything. I have been saved uh, delivered of several demons. I came out of a very, very intense, um, just lifestyle. Please go watch my testimony on the 700 club or all the different places that I've been on TV and different things like that. But, um, I come before you as a wife, a mom. I am the leader of the core group along with my husband, Steven Weaver. And the core group is a massive online movement, but now it is how do you describe the core group? It is, it is a movement. It is not just online. It is now feet on the ground and we are mobilizing to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and revival everywhere that we go. We are roughly with, um, the men, women, teenagers in our group, our mentorship and the children ages seven to 12 in our mentorship group. We are close to 19,000, possibly even 20,000 people by now. So, um, we have almost 3000 people on everybody. Just click share, just click share, share it. If you don't like it, go delete it off your page later. Definitely test this word, take it to the Bible. Everything that I'm going to say today, I have been in prayer about Everything that I'm going to say to you today has come directly from the Holy Spirit and I have weeped over this. Do you hear what I'm saying? Oh, I feel the presence of God now. I have weeped over this. I have gotten on this floor in my prayer room and I have cried. I mean, God has really gotten a hold of me concerning this word and I feel like the word is... It is not just for 2024, but very strongly will we see this begin to happen. But even more so going into 2025 even. So I want you all to please heed the word of the Lord and just ask the Lord to just begin to allow the Holy Spirit to speak in your heart. Ask the Lord right now. Everybody type in God, give me understanding. Father, I ask you, Lord, speak to me. In Jesus name in Jesus mighty name I just want to say um, again you heard me greet my husband um, I am under my husband's leadership because he is the head of this household and he is also the senior leader of core men and he leads so well he's an incredible husband and father and I just want to say I am coming to you as a woman of God who has been in ministry strong in ministry um, really since traveling and since 2018, but prior to that, I was leading worship, um, under a pastor for several, several years. And now I am under the leadership of my apostle, which is apostle Ryan Lestrange and Joy Lestrange. And, um, I just want you all to know that I am accountable. People correct me. If I say something that's out of line, I guarantee you I will be getting a call. If I post something that's out of line or that does not sit well, I have leaders and people that can speak into me. I'm not out here just running rogue, doing whatever I feel. Even this word right here, I had to make sure that this was okay to even come live with. Because not everything is a Facebook live. Usually I have class. And we go um, Tuesday night with just the core group. For the Lord said, speak to all the people. Those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Those of you that are on here and your intercessors, why don't you type in the comments, I'm praying over this broadcast. And I'm going to start. I will be looking down a little bit because I have lots of notes. As you can see, this says the return of the fear of the Lord. 
and I have tons and tons of notes. I would ask if there is a scribe like Deborah Peters, April, um, Jessica Wright, somebody that is a part of the core group that has that scribe anointing, please be prepared to possibly put some of these things, um, you know, to writing. That way I can reshare them with people that want to, you know, hold on to this word. Okay, so I had to just give you guys that little introduction because I believe the prophetic is a ministry that is in order and is done by the Lord. This is not just some wild ho -da 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 -ba, ho -da -da stuff that we're feeling. It's too serious for that. Okay, so Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you, Father, that you are going to speak through me. Father, I pray that you would not allow me to say anything that you have not ordained for me to say. And I thank you, God, that your people would hear, thus saith the Lord tonight. And from that, they will be transformed and changed by your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. I see everybody jumping on. There's over 4,000 people. Please continue to share. I was not expecting that. I was expecting maybe a couple hundred, 800, 900 people. I was not expecting 4,000. So let's get right to it. This message is a message to the church. I repeat, this message is a message to the church. This message is a message to leaders, pastors, prophets, apostles, any type of leadership. This message is for parents. This message is for worship leaders, elders, deacons, bishops, greeters, ushers, hospitality teams. This message is for the evangelists. This message is to the older folks and the young people and anyone who says that they are a Christ follower. That is who this message is for. If you are an unbeliever, please don't get on here and think that I am speaking to you. You're free to listen, but this message has a destination and the destination is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This message is also to those who say that they are his but have found to be false. And God has given me a warning to the wolves. And I, I saw you watching. I saw you watching. And I actually saw you watching multiple voices and multiple lives over course of years. And you are drawn to listening to the pure voices. And the reason why you are here probably now is, and what I saw the Lord showing me was this, that there was a mimicking spirit. You are here listening because you like to pick up on how pure voices sound, different things. You are, you've studied them and you mimic them so that you can later deceive the people. And you just so happen to be watching. I saw that. And so I'm speaking to those people, those that I just listed. Thank you for pleading the blood over me, Suzanne. I love you. The word of the Lord for 2024 is that there will be the return of the fear of the Lord. The shaking will intensify, intensify, says the Lord. The shaking will be noisy. I could say there is a shaking coming, but the Lord told me to say it this way. The shaking will intensify. Why? Because it's already been shaking. He's already been shaking us up. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Do you, do you, do you hear what's happening in the realm of the spirit? Even right now, I feel like trembling happening. Again, it will be noisy. It will even look chaotic. Some will say the shaking is even demonic. But the shaking has not been initiated by the devil. This shaking is the Lord's doing. The shake will be so intense in some places, ministries, and areas of the church. It will create a massive split. This is what I saw. The very ground will shake so violently, many will actually fall down. They will fall because of the shaking. But there will be those who will actually find their footing. They will find their balance when the shaking happens. It was, it's like they mastered it and they found this because they found the best place to be. And that is firmly planted on the rock. 
I feel the Lord. These that are planted firmly on the rock will have a view point where they can actually see the shaking all around them. Oh my goodness, I feel the Lord so strong. They will see shaking. They'll look over here and they'll see shaking. And then they'll look at this camp over here and they will see shaking. And they will be on the rock. Woo, Jesus. Uh, a person just wrote, there was a 1.7 earthquake here this morning in Queens. And I also heard that there was an earthquake the first day of the year in California. And I wore my California shirt for a reason. If the Lord allows me, I will get to that. Please begin to share, begin to share, begin to share. Many, uh, you will find good footing and you'll have balance. You'll look and you'll see shaking all around you. And you will see, those listening now, you will begin to see... Some who you thought were going to stand with you on the rock are not on the rock. They are on the ground and they are being tossed to and fro. And it will literally shock you this time. There has been a year of extreme. I said that for the year of 2023 as the Lord gave it to me. That 2023 would be the year of extremes. And extreme obedience was required. But that there would be a lot of extremes and that we would be shocked at people that we we thought were his and they 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 fell and so you will see people falling the ground will begin to shake and this is the lord shaking things up this is the lord tired of how we have handled his holy sanctuary and his people and he is Last year, I said, I hear the people saying enough is enough. But this year, I hear the Lord saying enough is enough. Now, I hear the Lord saying, now I'm saying it. That's a different story. Hear what I'm saying in here. There's 5,000 people on. Please begin to share. With this shaking, I seen the mercy of God. I know people are like, oh my God, this is so doom and gloom. Oh my God, what's going what's gonna to happen? Oh my goodness. I seen the shaking and people running Grabbing a hold of these rocks and climbing up on top of the rocks. And what the Lord showed me with that is all are not too far gone. I am going to cause the shaking to wake some of my people up so that they can return unto me. The solid rock Christ is where I stand. And others in their pride and in their arrogance they will not run to the rock. They'll think, I got this. I've been doing this so long. I've built this massive empire. Look what, the, look what the Lord has given me. Look what God has given me. I have a name. Everybody knows me. All this stuff. And they will, be, they will lose their balance. They will lose their balance and they will tumble over and they will fall. And the Lord says, take heed lest you fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Another version says, For those that think they're standing strong, be careful that you don't fall. And the shaking. For the shaking, the chaos, the controversy, there will be massive controversy happening in 2024. I know you guys already looked at all the prophetic words that told you that it's going to be the open door and you're going to be blessed, blessed, blessed. And I believe that. I believe that if you adhere to this next part that I'm going to talk about when it talks about the fear of the Lord, yes, God will bless. But I'm going to tell you, some of you are going to be standing in blessing and you're going to be looking at destruction all around you. It just is what it is. There will be controversy. And I saw from this shaking, it was like, the earth was just shaking, shaking, shaking. And the next thing you know, poof, 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 breaks the earth breaks up and it splits. A massive split I saw coming. And I was taken to a few references in the word that talks about this very thing. Is everybody hearing me? This is very serious. Please, 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 please. If you're hearing this, I want you to let me know in the comments that you're hearing this clearly. 2024, the year that we are in right now, a split is coming. Some will be on one side 
and some will be on the other side, calling it the other side. This split speaks of two priesthoods, type that in the comments, two priesthoods will arise out of this. And they will begin to take center stage in front of the eyes of the people. Two priesthoods. There will be a divide in the camp. There will be a divide in the camp. And I know many people heard, you know, that you, you saw me write that and you begin to speak of political things. But can I caution the church right now? The Lord showed me that even the political realm and scene is going to be so violent this year. People are going to want to kill over these things. And the Lord says to the church, don't you get distracted by it. And the Lord said to me as I was getting ready that there are houses of prayer. He has designed you to be a house of prayer for all nations. And the Lord said, do not change your assignment and go the political route because you see other churches doing that, that they have their assignment. You have yours stay the course and God will continue to bless it. If you get off course, then you'll do your own thing and whatever happens happens. You will reap the benefits of doing your own thing and going your own way and you will reap. I'm sorry, not the benefits. You will reap the repercussions. Um, all right, so there are two priesthoods. The first priesthood will be cursed. This is a cursed priesthood. This is an evil priesthood. This is a prideful priesthood, self-serving. They are lovers of filth. They mishandle God's people. And they are defiled before the Lord. Some of you watching right now, you have no idea that your very favorite person your very favorite minister is defiled in the sight of God. And this is why you need to stop praying to be blessed all the time. And please pray for the gift of discerning of spirits. To discern what spirit is in operation behind a thing. In the name of Jesus. The second priesthood will be a faithful priesthood, a pure priesthood, righteous, holy. They are ministers after God's own heart. If that's you, say that's me. And they are walking strong in the fear of the Lord. First Samuel 2 verse 12. Listen, for this prophetic word, I don't know if you guys are just wanting me just to call names out and do this. Now. I'm going to be reading from the Bible. I'm going to be reading from the Bible. If you hear prophetic words in 2024 and they don't bring you back to the Bible, you need to be very, very careful of them. So 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. And I'll read it for you. And it says, Now the sons of Eli were corrupt and they did not know the Lord. This is that priesthood that is corrupt and they don't know the Lord. Let me keep going. Instead of handling the sacrifice, how God instructed, they stole cho choice meats to indulge themselves. I encourage everybody to please go read about Eli's sons and what happened for this year is over. Read it. And verse 17 says, therefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. Guess what? They were still ministering in the temple. And and in front of God, he was saying, their sin is so great before me. They are evil. I don't know them. Because of these false ministers, God sent a prophet to release judgment. There is a time for us to rejoice and there's a time for us to get on our faces and begin to weep, to cry aloud and spare not. God in his mercy has allowed so many wonderful things to happen to the church. But because the gatekeepers and the watchmen fell asleep, the wolves crept in unaware. And so now we are here at this point. Otherwise, I'd be telling you that it's going to be an explosion of revival across the nations. And all we're going to see is revival, revival, revival. And I would be a whole liar if I only said that. So thank you, Jesus. Are y'all praying for me? Please continue to share. Please continue. 
there's over 5,500 people on. Because of these false ministers, God sent a prophet to release judgment. He first addressed the false priesthood. And then he speaks to the faithful and pure priesthood. And this is what the Lord says. Let me go to this verse. This is in 1 Samuel. It's still in chapter 2. And now we're in verse... Let me go and see... Twenty-nine, And this is what it says. Why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offerings? You honor your sons more than me. This is what God says to Eli about his sons that were over there doing evil. He says, why do you kick at my sacrifice? Why are you throwing it around and treating it like it's common, like it's nothing? How dare you do this? You are honoring your sons more than you honor me? God is about to deal with the idolatry in the church. Oh my goodness, I feel the power of God coming upon me strong. God is coming to deal with the idolatry. How dare you put anybody, any ministry, any person, anything above the word of God. I don't care how much you like them. You need to hate what God hates and love what God loves. I don't get too attached to my favorites anymore. I'm attached to my favorite who is Jesus the Christ. I don't get attached to all these new YouTubers. And, and I thank God for the ministry of people that will go on YouTube. I thank God for people like my brother Isaiah Saldivar, Apostle Pagani, my spiritual father, Apostle Ryan Lestrange, Pastor Mike Signorelli, and many more. I thank God for them. But I'm going to tell you, my eyes stay fixed on Jesus Christ. And at any point in time, he could tell me, stop, disconnect, move on, go here. I, I'm not with them. Anymore. And I'm not saying them. That goes across the board. And some of you will go and you will defend straight up heretical mess and say, you just need to pray. You have been rocked to sleep by a deceiving demon and you need to be careful because we are living in the last days and the deception is going to get worse and worse. And if you're deceived, deceived now at the beginning stages of dark deception, what are you going to do when it gets even worse? Get to know God. Oh my goodness. I know some people might've just jumped off right there, but I have to say it the way God tells me to say it. And he says, you, you honor your sons more than me. Out of 50 years of ministry, Eli corrected his sons one time. They were raping women. They were committing adultery. They were doing all of this defiled, disgusting acts. And he corrected them one time. And he said, why have you done this? He was soft on sin. Somebody type that in the comments. Ministers, God sent me here to warn you. You need to stop being soft on sin. Why have you not corrected the church for the gossip? How come you no longer preach about hell being hot? How come you do not tell the people to repent and turn from their wicked ways? Why is it that you can go on in the pulpit year after year and never correct the church of hundreds of people? Have you gone that far away from the concepts and the precepts of God? Here is your warning. Get back to the things of God. Or like he said in the book of Revelation, he will come and he will remove the candlestick. He will remove it. He will remove the light. He will remove his spirit. And you will be marked a place where the glory has departed. If you're watching this and you still have breath in your lungs and you still have a good ministry and it's not total, you're not totally gone. 
then this is a message not of meanness, but of mercy. In God's mercy, he will send someone to say, stop, you're going the wrong way. You better turn around now and go back or you will fall off this cliff. Take heed, lest you fall. Those that are afraid to correct and you're afraid to ruffle feathers, you're afraid to lose followers. This is for you guys too, those of you that are not preachers and pastors. God told you to be straight up and give the word and do this and do that and you're afraid to lose followers. You're afraid to ruffle feathers. Some of you, you're afraid that the tithers will stop tithing and stop giving. And you have now bowed to the people who are now your new God. The people are your new God. And even as God corrected Eli and he says, you honor your sons more than me. The sons were the God of him. Is everybody still following me? Everybody still okay? I love you enough to give you the straight up word of the Lord. Verse 29, it says that the Lord said this was the correction. This was the judgment that came. He says, you make yourselves fat with the best of my offerings of Israel, my people. Basically what he was saying is the priest, the good priest, they were given instructions about how to take care of the sacrifice, how to take care of the things of God. They were supposed to take the, the, the meat, put it in a pot, boil it down, take the prong, dip it in, whatever they got, whatever, whatever they got. And they could have that. But they didn't do this. These evil priests, they began to come in and they began to snatch and steal the choice meats that were really reserved for the Lord. They defiled the sacrifice. They defiled his holy temple. They stole it. And when, and when they, they didn't, they couldn't manipulate the people to give it to him. The Bible says that they said to the people, you don't give it to us. We'll take it by force. We'll steal it from you. We will come and take that. And they began to make themselves fat and indulge in the things of God. They were his, they were for his people and God sent you a warning. Those of you, he has blessed you with a big church. He has blessed you with wonderful people. And you've been able to see an increase financially. You better do right by God's people. And you better do right by that money. You better do right by the sacrifices. You better do right by God's people's time, their families. And if you're dipping your hands in and just get, being greedy, you have fallen down like I saw with that shaking I pray you have a chance to get up and run to the rock today in the mighty name of Jesus. Just because you saw other ministers taking up an offering a certain way, did you ask the Lord, was that the way that you were supposed to do it? There's nothing wrong with challenging people to give. Let us never lie and say, God said that there's this many people that can give this amount. I'm telling you, I know for a fact, I'm not saying I just sense. I know for a fact that people have done that and they have literally, it's, it's a lie. It's a literally a lie. They are doing that because they needed to make this amount and they went out there and did, and I'm shocked, shocked. May the fear of the Lord return to the church or get ready because you've been warned. Yeah, that ministry, that's a privilege and an honor. It's the Lord's. He's let you borrow it and let you be a vessel in it. Don't take it for granted. Don't be defiled in the sight of God. You might need a little bill paid this idea. You just better go to people and just be straight up and honest. Stop stealing from God's people. That is your warning. God is judging the house. Judgment will start in the house of God. Those of you right here that are listening, don't think that it's just the preachers and the pastors. You've held back too. You've held back your time, your sacrifice. You were supposed to go and bless this sister and take care of a bag of groceries for someone or sow here and tithe here and do this and that. And you've held back. You're keeping things back. You have a time to repent. Eli allowed it time after time because he too was getting fat off the spoils. 
The Bible actually says that he was obese because he was stealing these. He was a recipient of his son stealing it. He didn't give them the correction because maybe that little tide would dry up. Maybe it would mess up his flow of what was coming into his house. Yikes. So because of this, three judgments came. And you can read it for yourself. And it's still happening to this day. And I'm going to tell you why. The word of the Lord said, because of this, you will become lightly esteemed. That's what it says. It says, but now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. That means the favor of God is removed. That means the power of God. That means that influence. That means that everything that you had when it came to being trusted by God and God pouring out on you and him highly esteeming you, no more, you will be lightly esteemed like nothing. Can you imagine that? This is not a game. Some people will listen to this and they'll be like, this is too much. And they'll go off. They're already too far gone. Scary and dangerous. You will lose what they saying here was this. You'll be lightly esteemed. You'll lose that real authority, that real influence. The people that are full of idolatry, they might still esteem, esteem you. That's why the page can still grow and people over there doing straight up divination. Because the people have esteemed you, but God has not esteemed you anymore. He no longer is dealing with you. He's turned you over to your own ways. He said, let them go do their own thing. It literally says that. Go do your own thing. I don't know you. And then the next one came in. The next judgment came in and it says, you'll see distressed. Another version says you'll see an enemy. In my dwelling, in spite of all that I do good in Israel. What does this mean? God will pass you by with revival, but you're going to see it in another camp. You're going to look online and see it. You're going to be like, wow, there's revival springing up there. Wow, they're over there having a move of God. Wow, look what's going on over there. Look at all these mission trips. Look at it. And, and even though God's doing good in the church, it won't be in your house. It won't be in your church. It won't be in your ministry. You go, wow, that God's growing this person. And I mean, they're just getting poured out on the spirit of God is moving miracle signs, wonder, salvations, repentance. It's just mind blowing. And you will be sitting in the house of God in church and he will pass you by. He says, you'll see distress in an enemy in spite of all the good that I do in Israel. God's still going to do good. Oh, if you came on here thinking that this was just a harsh word just mean God still going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Ramanda. Is, is this resonating with anybody? Has anybody been hearing anything that I'm saying? Is anybody, has God been speaking to anybody about similar things? Please let me know in the comments. And then it says the third judgment. There's three judgments that'll be poured out. All the increase of your house will die out in the prime of life. Y'all, this is very serious. I want you to please hear. The word of the Lord came and said, all of your increase of your house will die in the prime of life. Now, of course, in this passage, this physically happened to many of the priests in this time. They physically died. But I believe right now the Lord wants to, it's speaking of spiritual things. That you'll be able to get as far, this far in ministry, at the height of ministry, when everybody is seeing you build, build, build. Wow, it's just so beautiful. Look at all your members. Look at all of this. Look at all of that. You lost the fear of the Lord and you'll be cut off in the prime of it. Is this a confirmation? Why? There's a shaking. It's intensifying. He's increasing it now. There's a shaking. People will build to a certain point. It will look very good in the eyes of people like they built an empire. But it will come crashing down. This is not because we wish bad on anybody. No. The Lord is slow in returning because he, he wishes that none should perish. 
I don't look around and go, I want them to fail, them to fail. Them. No! I want them to repent. I want them to turn to God. Remember your first love. Think about the nails in his hands. Have you forgotten who he is? Do you understand who he is? This is not a game. This is not a game. May the fear of the Lord return in 2024. There is a divide. Some will be on this side. Some will be on the other side. And it will be clear to those that are walking with God that others have gone too far. And even when you try to warn them, they won't turn back. So the word of the Lord will play out. This is not me. This is the word of the Lord. Mm. And then the word of the Lord came in the same scripture. And he says, this is terrifying. This is what's happening. He says, yet I will not cut off every man of yours from the altar. So your eyes may fail from weeping and your soul will grieve. What does that mean? He says, I'm going to do this to this evil priesthood, but I'm not going to kill them all off. I'm going to let some of them still be in the pulpit. So that you'll look at it and you'll be grieved. So that you'll look at it and you'll weep. This is for those that are not walking with God. These are for those that are lukewarm. These are for those that are compromised. These are for those that have allowed in mixture. And these are for those that play around and have all these idols and don't take God seriously. He says, I'm going to leave some of these false ministers, these, this false priesthood. They're going to occupy the altar, you know, the, the pulpit, the house of God until Jesus returns. So for those of you that are saying God's going to come and he's going to clean house. He's going to get them all out. He's going to wipe it all clean. We're going to have massive revival. No, according to this, the Lord is going to still allow some of these false, false ones going their own way and building their own thing. And people with low and little discernment, they won't even know the difference. They'll just see somebody shouting and just giving a good word. They won't know the difference. They'll see somebody like yesterday when I posted about the church that wanted to play the filthiest, most disgusting, despicable music that I could ever fathom in the house of our God. Oh my gosh, it makes me want to cry. Mm. And want to say, well, they did an altar call and all these people got saved. And you know what the Lord said to me? There will be a rise of false salvations. They're not real. They haven't counted the cost. They only raised their hand in an emotionally driven state after being rocked to sleep by mixture and witchcraft and perversion. Sure, I'll raise my hand and say, Jesus, come into my heart and change me, make, you know, yeah, no. He says, but they did not deny themselves and they did not pick up their cross and they did not follow me. Therefore, I will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity who practice lawlessness. I never knew you. I don't know you. I got chills all over me. And that's why the Bible says, for the minister that does this, woe to you if you make any of these little ones stumble. This is your warning. Stop playing in God's house. Woo, Jesus. Take heed so you don't fall. Here is the word of the Lord about the second priesthood that I saw arising so that you guys don't get sad and too heavy because that was heavy. Take a deep breath. Let the Lord just work on you with it. It is what it is. 
And now this is the second priesthood. There is a righteous priesthood that is also arising. Glory to God. Verse 35 says, Then I will raise up for myself, says the Lord, a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and who will do what is according in my soul. And I will build him an enduring house and he will walk before my anointed always. Woo, Jesus. The priesthood remains today, but is now increasing. Some of you on here, this is what the Lord is declaring over you. He is looking at you in your life. I know you messed up a little bit, but you're, you're, you're running to God. You're trying to stay at his feet. You're repenting. You're not in arrogance thinking that you're always right. You're broken and contrite before the Lord. You are this pure priesthood. You are the one that has God's own heart, what, what he wants in your heart. You are the pure priesthood. God's increasing it now. God is purifying the bride. I'm going to give you a very short story. Please listen to this because this goes with it. This is the biblical story that aligns with this word. For this word is for today, but this was also happening in biblical days. Zadok, the priest, and Abin Author, Abin Author. They were both priests. They both served David the king. Zadok's name means one who is proven righteous. Have you been proven righteous? Do you have a track record of being upright before God and not compromising? That's what his name means. Zadok saw that David carried an anointing on his life. He saw that David carried the anointing and he saw that the spirit of God had departed Saul. Saul was not relevant. He was not reverent. He was just going through the motions. He was a dead, dry ministry. That's what Saul represents. Ichabod. The glory is departed. God's hand has lifted. Had his hand on him. But then some things happened along the way through a series of dishonor and disobedience, compromise and playing games with God. And God is saying, okay, enough is enough. I gave you a chance. You keep playing with me. I gave you another chance. You keep playing with me. We think that, oh my goodness, we are, many people in the church are serving a false Jesus. And what I mean by that is you've created the Jesus that you wanted him to be. You go, you go to all the churches that just tell you, God is love. God is love. He's so loving. He's so loving. It doesn't matter how you, you know, if you want to live a homosexual life, God is love. It doesn't matter if you want to, you know, like little children, God is love. You know, he understands. He got, that's a fake, false Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. And you better come out of that lying deception before you too end up with, depart from me, I never knew you. He is loving. But many people love God. They don't fear him anymore. That's why they love coming to church and singing about him. But they'll also gossip in the back corner, right in the sanctuary. You love him, but you don't fear him because you're playing games. There's no reverential fear of the Lord. Oh my goodness. So he saw that, you know, the spirit of God departed from Saul. So Zadok went where the spirit of God was. And this is what I saw with the shaking. Everybody hearing me? I saw the shaking coming to the church. I saw a massive split. I saw a season of the people scattered. And eventually, many of them that just so happened to be the remnant, finding houses of glory. There will be a search, a massive search. Where's God's glory? Where's God's glory? Churches will see a lot of visitors popping in, popping out, popping in, popping out. What are they looking for? What are the people stirring for? Why are they walking all around? Why, why do they seem like they're not planted? Because they have been shaken up out of these dead, dry things. These places that don't want to do deliverance. Places that don't want to pray for the sick. Places that don't want to have strong word and repentance and salvation and holiness and righteousness. They're shaking out of these places. Why? Because the return of the fear of God is coming to his people again. 
And you don't need to be in a church service to get the fear of God. God's going to start waking people up in their bedroom. God's going to start dropping dreams into your spirit, man. And you are going to wake up carrying the reverential fear of God. We need the fear of the Lord. Give us the fear of the Lord. And they're going to begin to look for houses of glory. Why? Because they are on a mission. Because they know the word of the Lord is. Do not forsake the gathering for the days are approaching. They're evil. We're in the last days. Get connected. Today the Lord spoke to me about several years of his people in isolation i said what what does this mean why why are your people in isolation and the lord showed me 2020 ran the people back into their homes and half never went back and they have gotten comfortable now listen i have an online ministry so for me to say this this is massive they have gotten comfortable just watching an online service, hopping and skipping around, watching YouTube. And the Lord says, I said, don't forsake the gathering of the brethren, my people. And the Lord said, after 2020, they still were isolated. 21, 22, 23, never returned. And the Lord said, you will see there is coming a day where you are going to absolutely 1 million percent going to say, I definitely need to be connected to somebody. I don't care if it's a house church. Hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. If you come on here with religious craziness and say that you are the church, you don't understand the full counsel of God and you need to get off of social media, stop playing games and get rooted and grounded in the word for real. God never said that you are the church and therefore you can forsake the gathering. We'll need to be connected to each other, guys. This is why I'm starting to open up my home more for people. This is why I'm getting connected more. This is why we need a building. We need headquarters. Why? There's something that is coming. And you do not want to be all by yourself with no other fellowship. You're just talking to people in Alaska. You're talking to people online in Africa. You don't have nobody even locally. Come out of that box. Come out of hiding. It's okay. You can come out, come out, come out, wherever you are, get connected. If you allow church hurt from the past to keep you isolated, Satan will try to devour you. Please be whole and be healed. Okay, so that is what the Lord said to me today. I will just release that and going back to this. Oh my goodness. Mm. This shaking... And the split will bring the true fear of the Lord. For many, there will be a massive exodus from hype-only ministries. Hype, 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 hype. Excitement, excitement. Confetti. Big, you have to have big productions. Listen, I'm all for big productions, but they better be Holy Ghost filled. Just nonsense in the house of God. Just straight stupidity. I said it. It is straight stupidity. And that's why you're going to start losing people left and right. That's why some of you right now, you're like, I need to find a place where God's spirit is, his presence is, his word is emphasized and there's an importance on it. Okay. First Kings 139. This is what my notes say. I need to read first Kings 139. Okay. I'm reading it. And it says here. And all the people went up after him and the people played flutes and rejoiced with great joy so that the earth seemed to split with their sound. These two priesthood that are rising up, there will be a sound revival coming out of the, the bellies of the people. 
You will begin to hear revival when somebody opens up their mouth and they begin to speak. It'll be on their vocal cords. You'll say there's a different sound here. It's not about a voice that's singing. No, no, no. Even from them speaking, even from a whisper, even from them walking in the house and not saying anything, even them, you encountering them, you're going to say, whoa, I feel it. I'm telling you, it's going to be strong on these ones. The priesthood, the pure ones, the righteous ones, the ones that will not bow to Baal. You're going to know it. And it says that the earth literally shook. Why? Because you have these filthy, defiled priests occupying pulpits and you have these wild revival people that are true servants of the living God. And that is creating a massive tension till there's a split. Pick a side now. With the rise of the priest, I begin to also hear the Lord say, I am breathing on my sons who are the priest of their homes. And I've said this before when I was with Isaiah, but I want to reiterate it. There, I give the full word over there with Isaiah Saldivar's broadcast. Um, it says revival, family revival, something like that. God is breathing on the fathers and the husbands in the household. We are about to see a massive move of men of God. I said this before at the war and glory retreat, but it was likened unto like the promise keepers movement that happened years and years and years ago. I want to say 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago when this thing was massive. So shall you begin to see mighty men of God arising to their place. They've taken a quiet back seat for a period and we've seen women exploding, women in ministry, women prayer groups, women doing this, evangelizing, all of these things, the rise of the Debras, the rise of the Esthers. And honey, we're still arising and we're still moving forward in power. I'm going to get to that in just a minute if you stay with me. By the way, if you just jumped on, please, can you share this? I'm asking you to share this, please. Thank you so much. We are going to see men Stepping away from the TV and getting in their word. We're going to see abusive men repenting and bringing restoration, wholeness, and healing to the family. You're going to see ones that were called cheaters, no longer called cheaters. They will be called righteous. People that swore them off and said they'll never change, they will be found out to be liars because they will change. And they will be transformed by the glory of God. And people will have to look and say, I know that was God. It has to be God. And I even see people getting sentences overturned. The Lord says, this will be a prophetic sign that I am loosing my people from the chains and the prison bars that have held them back. I see actually in jails, in prisons, and uh, they given their life to Christ and God is going to start overturning these sentences. Um, they're going to get time served. They're going to get shortened sentences. They're going to get good time, this, that, and the other, because they're going to return to population and they are going to be a blessing to the population. They are not going to be a burden. They are going to come home. The Lord says, this will be a sign of my son's returning. So don't give up hope. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. The sons are coming. In that same thing, I saw the mothers sounding the alarm. Now this, for the most part, was really spiritual mothers, women that move and you have a mother's heart. How many of you on here watching right now, you, you feel like, I have a mother's heart. You really care for people. You see a homeless person, you want to bring them a little sandwich. You want to get them a blanket. That's a mother's heart. Mothers do that. How many of you on here like that? I seen mothers sounding the alarm and the Lord took me to this story, which I just read you a little bit of in the same story of Zadok, the priest and Abed Arthur, the other priest that kind of went astray. All of this kind of came to a head when, what is his name? Oh my goodness. Da David's son, Adonijah. Adonijah, he was the son after Absalom. All of a sudden, he looks at his dad. His dad's old. David's old. They're bringing in women. He doesn't want to sleep with them. So they're like, he's about to die. He says to himself, I'm going to be king now and exalts himself in a place that God never put him. He tries to overtake the throne without his dad blessing him, without the good counsel. It wasn't his. It was going to Solomon. And, and this is what the word of the Lord says. 
So he began to call himself king. And this is 1 Kings um, chapter 1. I'm reading in uh, verse 10. He invited all these people over to make him king. But look, he did not invite Nathan, the prophet. Prophets on here. Don't be surprised when you don't get invited to those that look super popular. Why? Because they know that you're a true prophet and you're going to call them out on their mess. Stop taking everything so personal. Take it as a sign that you are a true prophet and people just might be scared that you're going to see their demons. He did not invite Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, the mighty men, or Solomon, his brother. He did not invite them. Oh, Rabba Shanda Rabba Kasha. I got to put my music back on because it went off. He did not invite Solomon, his brother. So he didn't invite any of the people that were about to call him out. He only invited the people that were going to shout him down and share demons and be okay with each other's filthy sins. Oh my goodness gracious. And Nathan the prophet spoke to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. He called in the mother. Come on in here, mother. We got a problem. And he said, have you heard what your son is doing? He's trying to say that he's the king. He's trying to take over the throne. And he, and he began to say, now I need you to go immediately to your husband, the king, and say to him this, this, this. And he gives the prophet, gives the mother instruction. And then he says, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to confirm your words. Women of God, mothers of Zion, listen to what I'm saying. God is raising you up to be a secret weapon. The devil has no idea what is about to hit his kingdom. Don't think you need a platform to change the world. Your stage is in your kids' bedrooms. Your stage is when you sit down and you begin to read the word to your children. Your stage is whatever platform God gave you. It's whatever ministry God gave you. And the Lord says, I'm going to come in and I'm going to back you up. You go in. And you do what is right. What she was doing is she was going into the king and she was sounding an alarm. Danger. Something's happening. Something is off. Something is not okay. And she did it. It was, uh, she was the mother of Solomon. And so here's the thing. He said, your son, this is for your son Solomon. And he's trying to take it. This mother said, oh no, you're not. You're not going to take this from my child. You're not going to take my child's life and assignment and purpose. You're not going to overthrow my child. You're not going to come in and steal this from my family. And she marches into King David. And she says, my Lord, you swore by the Lord. She begins to remind him of the word that he swore. And King David as old as he was, about to go on and, 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 and leave this life, he begins to take action. Why? Because it was on the heels of the mother stepping up. Mothers are arising in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the last, last half of this word, and I'm going to jump off, off of here. This is the last half. This is the important part. Please listen. This focuses on the return of the fear of the Lord, mainly. Many people in the body of Christ... Many good meaning Christians, you love God, you love the Lord, but many of you, you don't have the fear of the Lord. King David, when he went to bring in the ark, listen, cause this is happening right now in, in churches, ministries and homes all over the body of Christ. He went to bring in the ark. Why? He loved the Lord. He was a man after God's own heart, but he messed up right here because he loved the Lord. When he brought the ark in, he didn't have the fear of the Lord. There's a difference. He just wanted to do it any kind of way, slop it together and just handle it any kind of way. Just overexcited, just love the Lord, but you don't have the fear of the Lord. And so when Uzzah went to grab the cart and steady it, God struck him dead. David didn't expect that, threw him off. And he had to go and get right before God and learn how God likes 
things to be done. That is the return of the fear of the Lord. Why have you put announcements as the most important part of the service? Why are you all coming into service 20, 30, 40 minutes late every single week? Why is there gossip in the lobby? Why are your you mothers of Zion, the mothers on here, why do you allow your child Oh my goodness, this is a, this is my this is my heart, okay? Just say ouch and I still love you. Why do you bring your child in and raise them up from when they are toddlers to be on an iPad device or a phone and have to be entertained by that in the house of God? And then when they get older and they don't want to go to church and they don't want to read your, their Bibles at all, you fuss at them. Why don't they have reverence when people are crying and praising God and the Spirit of God comes in and begins to move in the house? Why aren't the children shown to reverence God? Why don't you get on your knees, on your face, bring your little toddler down there with you and say, Come on, we're going to bow before the Lord. He's in this place now. Why do you shove iPads in them so they can be busy so you can get your fill? Let the fear of God return to the family unit. May it return to the husbands and the fathers. May it return to the mothers. May it return to the children. May it return to the teenagers. Oh, daba shadabakaya. And now we live in a day and age where any kind of correction is seen as being religious, strict, or mean. Oh my gosh. Where have we gone? No. No. We need the fear of the Lord. Any place that does not host the fear of God you will be bypassed by anything supernatural, any miracles, wonders, the true ones, the true miracles and wonders, not the made up fake divination stuff. If there is no fear of God and you do not honor him, he said, I'll honor those that honor me and I'll despise those that despise me. I won't, I won't esteem you highly at all. So the fear of the Lord is returning to the church. It is absolutely returning to to the church. This is my very last page. This is it. This is it. This is all I got. Houses of God and your house, Christian homes, they are about to be audited. Audited. Is that the word? Spiritually. Spiritually audited. Surveyed in the spirit of God. By the spirit of God. Woo! Where there is no fear of the Lord, these houses will then be marked. You will be marked Heaven will look down and say, that one's marked, this one's marked. Because there is no fear of God anymore. Exodus 2020 20 says, Do not fear. Watch this. Two different kinds of fear here. Do not fear being frightened. That's what unbelievers feel when we say fear of the Lord. They feel frightened. Why? Because their sin should frighten them in front of a holy God and should lead them to repentance and God is merciful and good that's why they can repent do not fear for God has come to test you that his fear reverent fear may be before you so that you will not sin oh my goodness the fear of the Lord is going to produce extreme obedience, part two. The fear of the Lord is going to produce extreme obedience. When you truly have the fear of the Lord in your life, you will obey God and you won't have to pray it out. Some of you have been praying, but you have not been obeying. Oh, let me say that again. You have been praying and the prayer, alleged prayer, has actually become an excuse to procrastinate in obeying. I just need a little bit more time to pray about it. God said to do it. Well, I just want to make sure I just need a time to pray. But I'm just praying. I'm just praying. I'm just praying. And God said to move. How long are you going to play this game? Extreme obedience. That's what we need. The return of the fear of the Lord to his people will cause them to be fully on the Lord's side. No more will we straddle the fence. Some of you are going to need to make decisions tonight. 
go through your page and start unfollowing ministries that you know have compromised. Why? Because you need to keep it out of your eye gate. Keep it out of your ear gate. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Mm. Jesus, my God. Some of you have been playing it safe. You do not like to confront, yet you are on a battlefield. How do you not like to confront and you're in battle? You like playing it safe. You like hiding behind stuff. I just don't want any confrontation. Can't we all just get along? No, we cannot all get along because there are wolves in the house of God. There is a battle that we are fighting. I'm getting along with those that are in the pure priesthood, the righteous ones. I'm getting along with them, but I'm not getting along with witches and warlocks. So stop saying that. Because you sound like you don't have a full understanding of the counsel of God. I love you. And this is why I'm saying it. Yes, I saw the swag surfing too. I know your people are commenting, commenting, commenting. And it makes it, and by the way, this word, I had planned this word over two weeks, three weeks going into the new year. The Lord had already given me this word. I had already had this ready to go. I was waiting to make sure God would allow me to release it. So when I saw all of that stuff, mess happening and everything going on with the church, I was just like, this is just a confirmation of the word that God gave me. Oh my goodness. You need to hate what God hates. Love what he loves. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. This is what Proverbs 8, 13 says. In case you need a word, the scripture is. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. How come you don't hate evil? How come you're okay with homosexuals coming into the house of God and not repenting, getting delivered, being discipled and turning from their ways, but saying in their own pride, no, this is who I am. You're going to bless my babies. You're going to do whatever I say. I'm going to give you money and tithes and you're going to let me just roam around here and do do whatever. Come and be transformed. And no, we're not going to be just putting our approval on abominations. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I love you, the person. Same as I love the person that's gossiping. I love you, but you better get that sin out of your life. So you don't die and go to hell. Why is that hard to understand? It's the Bible. It's not meanness. May we come out of that. We need to hate what is evil. Hate pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth. I hate. This is what Proverbs 8, 13 says. A perverse mouth. Someone that is speaking disgustingly in the church. Speaking nasty and rude and just slanderous and... God hates that. And yes, that's what the word says. Mm. Isaiah 66, 2 says, but on this one, I will look on, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. There is going to be a high emphasis on the word of God, a high emphasis on the word of God, a Bible revival. You need a word, get in your Bible. You need a prophetic utterance, get in your word. Play it in the morning on audio. Play it through the house. Read it. Study it. Find the commentary books. Find the study Bibles. Underline. Highlight. Write it out. Do whatever you got to do. But there needs to be a high importance on the word. And I heard the Lord say, for the places that put a high reverence on prayer and my word, I will bless them with revival and my presence will remain on their, on their house and on them. Those that prioritize prayer and the word will receive the blessing of revival and it will be in the hearts of people. It's not like a three day service that we had. It'll be steady in them. They are carriers of this revival. Woo, come on somebody. Because I will honor those that honor me. The return of the Lord will cause houses of his presence to begin to do makeovers. Get ready to see a makeover. And when your church starts changing it up, don't say, we've never done it like that. You might be the problem then. Get on board with the, what is God doing now? 
And it's not like this progressive thing where we're changing and we're evolving into the culture. No, we're going back to the foundation things. That's what we've gotten away from. Adarabashaya. Let them call you religious. Let them call you old fashioned. I'm old fashioned, but I'm carrying the glory. I might not be able to go everywhere you can go. I don't listen to all that stuff you listen to. I don't go to the movies that everybody else goes to. I don't care. None of that entices me. I'm not of the world. I'm carrying the glory. I'm a carrier of the glory. I'm carrying the ark the right way. I'm carrying it with sacrifice. My life is a living sacrifice. I'm laid down for God. Everything in me. Today, I literally screamed, God... If there's even one little tiny ounce of anything in me that is not of you, rip it out, purge it out. And I said this to God, kill it out of me. Don't let me put ministry above you. Don't let me put the core group above you. Don't let me put any family member, the love of my life, my husband, anybody before my God. I will not do it. He's worthy of it all. Do you, do you understand this? Do you understand this? Mm. For those that carry the fear of the Lord, you will be walking wisdom. There'll be wisdom in your businesses. When you begin to see the turmoil that begins to unfold this year, Oh, some of these things are orchestrated by the government and those higher powers that be. I'm not going to get into it. They're doing things. Because it's a way to control the people and the masses. But you will be blessed. And you will be walking wisdom. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We begin to see things happening in the food industry shortages of things we never in our entire lives y'all never seen shortages but you'll begin to see them don't you let fear in fear is a gateway for the for the devil to come in with all kinds of other demons stand strong stay firm be in your word trust god god's gonna allow you to walk in wisdom you'll know what to do what to store up how to ration how to do you you'll be blessed are you hearing me? And you'll be able to be a blessing to other people. There are things coming. I know other prophets have said this. Oh my. God wants us to remember to take communion. Think of him often. Communion. It's important. We remember the cross and the blood and the finished work that he has paid a price for us to have healing in our bodies. Ask the Holy Spirit now for wisdom on how to take care of your immune systems. There's new sicknesses and viruses that they are trying to release on the people. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how all of a sudden almost everybody in America just got sick that quick. And I don't know, I maybe I had let my guard down too because the Lord told me to not eat certain things and to be careful and I was just running, running, running and doing stuff. And I ended up getting sick and I'll tell you, I got tested for COVID, negative. Got tested for flu, negative. I don't know what this sickness was. It was not a sinus infection. It was none. It was like a new thing. Has anybody else had, has anybody else experienced that or is that just me? I don't know. Maybe it was just an attack on me. I don't know. But I was like, what is this? This is, this sounds like a, it's, it felt like a new something. It was like a COVID flu sinus infection mix of them all together. Did anybody else experience that lately? They are going to try to shut us down again. They are going to try to bring masks back. They are going to try to do all the vaccines and to do all of this and do all of that and fear this and fear that. I'm telling you, you all need to be pleading the blood of Jesus. This is the year to plead the blood. Other ministers, I have heard them try to teach that we should not plead the blood. Run from any minister that says you should not plead the blood. They put the blood on the doorpost. 
and the spirit of death pass them over. The blood of Jesus is better than the blood of lambs and goats. It speaks a better word. Run from a minister that is subtly trying to get you to stop doing those things. Danger. I don't care if they're your favorite person. Get more sense in the realm of the spirit than just, these are my favorites. And you'll sit around and, and play games. Plead the blood. Take communion. Get your immune systems strong. Start moving forward in those business ideas. Now is not the time to just wait for two, three more years. Do it now. Adabashaya. And the, the Bible says that... He, Psalms 25, 12 says, who is the man that fears the Lord? He shall teach him in the way he chooses and he shall dwell in prosperity. Prosperity is not just you get lots of money. It's you are, you're doing well in all areas. You're prospering in your family. You're prospering in your marriage. You're prospering in your businesses. You're prospering in this life. You're being, you're a success. You're doing well. Not so you can just boast so you can help others. Hello. Common sense will tell you that. I don't even need to be prophetic to tell you that. Psalm 25, 14. The secret of the Lord is those who fear him and he will show them his covenant. God's going to show you his covenant if you have the fear of the Lord. He's going to show you secrets. He's going to reveal things. This is the year that there will be a release of the revelation of God. Release, release, release. You'll be reading the Bible. Next thing you know, the revelation of God just hitting you. Drop downs. Whoop. Boom. Release and you're going to begin to open up your mouth and release the word of the Lord. It shall come to pass. Proverbs 3, 7 and 8 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. You will be kept. God is not going to let you just have to be put on all these machines. Remember how people were in COVID? They had to be put on the machines. They had to pump their chest. They had to shake them, put the vibrant and get all that turn them over and all that stuff. No, no, no. Mm -mm. If sickness tries to jump on you, it's going to be eradicated out of your body. I tell you, I was sick and I went to the prayer warriors and I was like, guys, I don't do this because I don't like to worry the core group at all. But y'all, I need your prayers. Steven, he had to take over my class on a Tuesday night and he said, core group, pray for Jenny. And as God is my witness, the next day, this means I was healed in the night. From a sickness that I felt was actually at the, the very beginning of it really starting up. I was like, oh my gosh, this is not good. I'm like, this is going to, this felt like it's going to put me down for a week or longer. The next day, I opened my eyes. Sniff. <clears throat> Cleared my throat. Every bit of sickness that all that drainage, all that pressure, all that my face was burning constantly, ears clogged up, all that sickness, body aches, all that, gone. Totally healed. And you will lie down in your bed and you will be healed, the Bible says. You will lie down in your bed and you'll be healed. Oh my gosh, I'm almost done. This is the last bit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, The fear of the Lord leads to life and he who has it will abide in satisfaction and he will not be visited by evil. Things are going to pass by your house. You will only see with your eyes the destruction of the wicked. And he will hold you and bear you up. So you will be secure in all of your ways. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. But no plague, disease or disaster will come nigh to your dwelling place. This is the promise of God. This is not for every single person that says they are a Christian. This is for those that have the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord will make you walk righteous and upright before him. The fear of the Lord will make you want to quit smoking weed just in case you feel even in an ounce it could possibly even grieve the Holy Spirit. The fear of the Lord will make you put that alcohol down and you won't pick it up again. Because you, you don't have time to play with God. He's soon to return. The fear of the Lord will get you to stop going over there to that crazy person that calls themselves a prophet. Because they can 
prophesy accurate all this stuff and you over there worshiping them and it's straight up division and divination it'll cause you to come out from among them it'll cause you to come out of that club and come out of that church that looks like a club too come out of both in the name of jesus father i thank you god lord i feel that i have this release now i've said everything that i felt you wanted me to say father lord i ask father that every word the people of god would take it back to the bible and in prayer and test the spirit father i thank you that you would confirm it lord confirm your word establish the work of my hands as your word says i thank you that you were going to cause this word to go to the north south east and west as far as the eye can see may this word be spread and may people repent and come back to god if you're on here right now and you need to repent i feel this so strong do not jump off if you don't need to repent help us pray have the fear of god for real don't just say i have it and then Go back to old ways. Help me pray. If you need prayer, you need to repent, I need you to go ahead and type that in. We are going to see massive moves of God's spirit all over the globe. You're going to see something really stirring up in Texas. I mean, it is going to be wild Texas. The wild, wild west. It's going to be like, revival breaking out in so many different places that you won't be able to just define it to one thing it won't be one thing texas is going to be a hot spot i know there's many people that have said said that and prophesied it but this year get ready and you're going to see women in in this area that are really kind of taking charge in breaking things open but then the men of god are going to rise up and they're going to take their their rightful place california god's eyes are on california um, many people have said that California is, you know, this kind of state and it's, it's, you know, all of their, um, their morals are going out the, out the, you know, just being flushed out and, and they don't care about this. And, uh, you know, the, a, the alphabet community has taken over, but there is a remnant in California. And I began to hear even, um, a city, I don't think I've ever been there in my life, Pasadena, pa Pasadena. Thank you, Jesus. Pasadena. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord is going to raise up a very strong voice in L.A. And this voice is going to be very unusual and unique. And they will, people will hear it and be like, well, it sounds like John the Baptist. Even though we've never heard John the Baptist, what we're, what we're saying is, this person is giving us a repent for the kingdom of God is at hand message. That's what LA is needing. They aren't moving there. They are there already. And the Lord is going to raise up this voice. People will look and say they're strange. They'll even look at John the Baptist, how they dress, how they went. This doesn't seem like a minister. This doesn't seem like what a minister should be doing, wearing, talking like. But the Lord will raise them up. His hand will be on them. And it will cause many people to come out of mixture, come out of witchcraft, come out of perversion, and turn to the Lord before the rapture. God's hand is on London and the UK. There's a stirring there. There is a returning unto the things of God. There is strong evangelism that is breaking out. Uh, uh, the UK will be even a training place. Many people have said that it's going to be a place for the prophets, this and the other. But I see the Lord training evangelists. There will be a heart of the evangelists beating in the region. Yes, 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 yes. Where are the evangelists? Send them. Now is the time. Hallelujah. And God is going to begin to blow even on um, ministries within the church that we are not used to, like counselors. You'll see counselors doing dual roles like deliverance ministers and counseling. Preaching and counseling. Yeah. 
they're going to have a cutting edge way into speaking and getting into the deep things of God with a person that just the regular old ways that we've done it all the time. That's not how the people are receiving. They're going to have a different type of flow. These are the ones with these dual anointings. They will be the ones to really reach those coming out of the lifestyle of homosexuality. Yeah. In Jesus mighty name. There's many places that God is going to be moving in. I cannot speak on all the places. Those are just the things that the Lord showed me. For those of you that repented, I just pray right now that God will touch you. He will transform you in Jesus' mighty name. That those things will be wiped slate clean. That guilt and condemnation, I command that spirit of shame, come up and out now in Jesus' name. Compromise Loose your hold in Jesus' name. You spirit of perversion, you spirit of religion, break your hold now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, begin to just put your hands up and just begin to say, I receive the power of the Holy Spirit for my life right now. I thank you, God. I surrender my life to you. I say that you reign supreme as king in my life. I will have no other gods before me than you, God. You are my true God, and I serve you and you only. I repent of the mixture. I repent of being lazy in church. I repent of not having the true fear of God. I repent of the gossip. I repent of not being in my word. I repent of turning away from my first love. How can I turn away from you, God? Where can I go? You have the words of life. I repent of it. I repent for being mixed up in a church and I refuse to leave because my grandma went there and my great grandma. And God, I know you told me to go. And I kept saying I needed to pray, but I refused to obey. I repent and I'm leaving now. I'm writing the letter today. I repent for harboring unforgiveness towards somebody. I repent for speaking about somebody's ministry. And God never told you to do that. God never told you to post your opinion. God never told you to get in that comment section. And you did it anyway. You need to repent. You lack the fear of the Lord. You're too quick to type stuff. No thought of the fear of God. How does this affect God? How does this grieve the Holy Spirit? Is this what God wants me to type? We need to repent all the way across the, the board. In the name of Jesus. Now receive God's forgiveness. Receive his mercy. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. He is truly a good, good father. I can't even believe that there's been over 5,000 people for an hour and a half. For a word like this, I just didn't think that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is only by your spirit. It is not by might, nor by power, nor by algorithm, nor by followers, nor by anything. It is by your spirit. It is by your spirit. The people are hungry and thirsty for the Lord. The people are hungry. The people are thirsty. They're waiting for the word of the Lord. They're thirsty for more of the Lord. We are desperate for you. We only want the truth. We are desperate for you. We only want you. Lord, give us the fear of the Lord. Yeah. I love you all. I need to go. Be blessed. I was going to put links and everything in the video and the Lord told me I was not to do that. I'm not allowed to do that. I was like, I'm going to put the core group link. I'm going to put this link, uh, the Bible study. I, I'm, I, he just, he said, no, it's just the word of the Lord. And that's what you got. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day, evening, night. Please begin to share if you haven't already. 
and I will see you all later. Steven, I love you. Core group, I love you for life. I love you, core group. Bye-bye.